Well, good morning. It's not a very nice morning. Rather dull and wet outside, but I'm nice and warm inside, so... Last night, when I was waiting for batteries to charge for this, I decided to do a bit more testing, and I tested some of these printers. Um, that one up on the sofa doesn't appear to work. Um, that little screen up there, every time you press a button down here, and it doesn't matter what button, that goes blank. It turns on with an Epson logo that comes up on there, and as soon as you press any one of these, that just goes blank. And this light was flashing down here, which I assume means no ink, but whenever you pressed any buttons, nothing happened, so... I assume that one doesn't work. This one seemed to function, apart from not having any ink in it. Um, as did the one, the Dell one underneath, but uh, that didn't seem to take the paper properly, but I don't know if that was a fault on my end, not putting it in properly, or, I don't know. So it's a, it's a maybe work. This one, however, <coughs> is a Lexmark all-in-one. It's come with all the paperwork, including that booklet, and uh, does seem to work. I plugged it in, I did a... Um, um, copy of a newspaper page, which is actually over here. I did a copy of the front page. I'll finish dropping that on the floor. See? It, uh, sort of missed part the top. Cut the top off a little bit. Well, I think that's because uh, I don't have the um, paper in there straight. But yeah, that seems to work. At least that function works, and I can't see any other reason why it wouldn't work. With the um, actual printing, there's little ink left. It does tell me the ink is low. <coughs> uh, so, that's one I'm going to be keeping. Because I do need a half-decent printer. That would make life a hell of a lot easier when selling on eBay, because I can print the postage labels off. Uh, oh yeah, but this Epson, that was flashing up no ink. And uh, I did check the cartridges, and the coloured ones are pretty low. There's only a dribble left in them, and the black cartridge is uh, completely empty, so... It seems to be telling the truth that there's no ink, so I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. Um, I haven't tested these two yet, because I think I'll have to connect them to a PC to see if they'll print. There's no um, no test print feature on the on the um, actual printers on them ones. So moving on. Also tested that power pack. The uh, fan on the bottom doesn't work, but the power pack itself does. So I don't know, I might be able to change the fan in there. I think I've got a uh, little power supply with an identical fan in it to that. Uh, what else did I do? Well, I had the camera off. I had a look at that laptop. The clip that holds the battery in and that little compact laptop is broken. And that fell out onto this floor and made a hell of a lump last night, so I'm probably upset my neighbours below me. That wasn't my fault, that was an accident. Uh, I tested that motherboard, the MSI motherboard, and that functions perfectly. The problem is I don't have the um, back I.O. plate for it. <coughs> but uh, that is a decent motherboard. So, plan for today is to finish testing this lot. I know at least one of these, I mean, there's two of these I can see at least, that don't have a power supply. So I'll save those till last. 
Um, that flat tower there doesn't have one. I think just for the hell of it, I'll go and get the other two flat cases from the shed later and uh, test those to see if they do actually work. I know one's a compact. I can't remember what... No, I don't actually know what the other one is. I haven't looked. So... I haven't even eaten breakfast yet because I haven't really felt hungry. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start picking up some computers and uh, seeing what, what ones are the ones that are left work and what ones don't. Do I need a light on in here? Will it make much difference? A yeah, little bit. Yeah. Oh, the sun is trying to come out today. According to the weather, it is supposed to be uh, rather wet and miserable. Anyway, it was typical British of me, and I talking about the weather. Right, <coughs> let me turn the camera off. Go get another, well, the first computer of the day. Whoops. Um, to test, so uh, we'll be right back. Okay, I'm all set up. It's a media 2 motherboard and an Asus motherboard. It's quite nice in here, actually. There's a mix of SATA power cables and the old IDE cables. Another hard drive caddy that I didn't bother putting in. Four SATA ports, DDR2 memory, dim slot things, bulbs, blur. PCIe graphics slot. Looks nice. Question is, does it work? Let's turn the power on. We've got a green LED on at the bottom there. And let's hit the power. Who did? Beeping like that isn't a good sign. It's not a RAM issue beep. That must have another issue. I may try and try changing the uh, processor if I have one. Well, I was going to say the fan was quiet. It was. Right, so this one's a file. Well, it turns on, but it doesn't do anything that needs to do. Oh dear. Someone's managed to bend the uh, USB port. I wonder if they were um, poking around in there trying to get a card out or something. Well, they may have put the wrong one in and that fell through. I've never seen these before, these are interesting. Oh dear. Do they just unscrew? Do they pull off? Or? Oh, I see, you pulled them out. Ah. Ah. Right. Well, that can be fixed. I should be able to gently uh, prise that up. Okay. So, I'm going to get another one. I'll be right back. Well, I'm back with this one just for a minute. Because stupid me didn't have the monitor cable plugged in properly, so it uh, does actually work. CPU over temperature error. Ah, so that's what that big bit. So that might be might be as simple as putting some fresh thermal paste on it. So uh, that'll be one to investigate in a future video. So I'm off again. I'll go and get the uh, next PC. Just thought I'd turn you on and show you my goof. I didn't plug the VGA cable in properly. Either that or it fell out when I had moved the um, case around. Uh, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so my next choice is this big old Dell. And it's one of those where you've got a button at the top and a button underneath to 
open it up like a big door. There doesn't appear to be... No, there's no CD drive. Oh, there is USB ports and a headphone port at the front there. Door's got half right. Right. So fast. I've got to press that button. That button. And in theory, the side panel closest to me should. It can be a bit fiddly because with bells they do tend to be quite heavy as well. Only. That might explain why it's got the two extra USB ports on it, actually. So, let's just plug her in. Okay, so start up without me hitting the button. Or oh, it did something. Ooh! Build a nice spell. <laughs> but maybe that's because I've got no keyboard or mouse connect connected. But uh, this does appear to work. Yeah, I'm a bit mixed with Dell. I like them because they are sturdy and quite robust and I do find their machines to be quite reliable as well. Downside to them is because they're so robust, they're quite heavy to carry. I mean, this one's quite a heavy machine, and uh, they do tend to do their own thing, so you can't really um, upgrade them. I suppose you could, but you're quite limited on what you can do. You could upgrade the memory, uh, and in this particular machine, you can uh, upgrade the no slots with normal sized or standard sized PCI cards. I've got their own, they'll always have their own motherboard layout on the back here, IO layout. 
It looks like that plate, I.O. plate, is actually built into the machine. Fans working fine, we get a nice breeze off of that. See, they don't even use a standard style heatsink. That's why I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to test this. Because I bet it goes into a computer similar to this one. They are different motherboards. Um, I'll take that saw to the system. Because I, I can't actually see any mounts on this Dell motherboard for a heatsink. Hmm. So I'm not sure how I'm going to go about uh, testing that. I don't really want to turn that on without a heat sink in the processor. This machine, I think I'll try and get running and that will be in part of my own collection. Oh, hello, it has done something at last. <coughs> well, I know there's a keyboard failure because I haven't plugged the damn thing in. Da -da -da -da, you know, all the Dell copyright stuff. What's an Optiplex? A Dell Optiplex GX200 series. Eee. I didn't actually think this one was as new as that. Um, I don't know about anywhere else in the world, but I do find Dells are commonly used within the business sector. You'll find them in, like, uh, offices and businesses and they seem to be quite popular for them rather than domestic use. Oh god, that's my phone. I'll be right back. I'm back. Uh, I've also had something to eat while I uh, had to disappear and answer the phone. I've also got another test subject out in the... Ew. <coughs> I wouldn't be surprised if I find something living in this one. Look at all those cobwebs. This has probably been stored in a shed. <coughs> Just clean my throat. <coughs> we'll try to. Pop your chocolate bars where I can get them. <laughs> Of all the computers I've opened up in my time, I've never seen one full of cobwebs. Not like this. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I've just eaten. know what it is. <coughs> um, oh, I'll have those out there. Some pretty pink anodized screws. Three of them I've got now. <laughs> hmm. Whatever it is, I think I just did. Oh, hello. It's another one. Oh, pink and ice cream. Right. So let's pull this out of the way. There's nothing living on that apart from the cobwebs. <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. It's a piece of plant. I think. Yep. For some reason, there's a piece of plant inside here. That actually looks pretty fresh at all. Right. Well, if something goes buzz in here, it's probably an insect on the electrics. <laughs> I really, 
I've been in some dusty cases, but never one with this much cobwebs in it. Right. <coughs> anyway. Let's see if it works. Something short of a miracle if it does work. Wrong card. Make sure I've got the card up the right way. Plug in the cables. A lot of Dell's things sort of start up and switch off as soon as you plug the power cord in for some reason. Now I'm going to use the keyboard. I want the mouse. And of course, one out of cable. Make sure it's plugged in this time. So, around the front. Mm. I've just found another anodized screw. Mm. We may possibly. I have a memory issue with this one. A RAM issue. And that might be something as simple as a load of shit in the dim slot. Which, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> uh, so this can go in the, uh, have a look at later pile. So, uh, I shall return with another. I'm back with another one. This one's got a slightly different design of side cover on it, as you can see. This bit is a uh, curved, not dead straight. But apart from that, it is pretty much identical to the other machine. What we've got here? Hard drive bag. Quite a stack of bays over there. My glass of coke. I do like my glass of coke. Not much to see in here, it's got a dial up mode in a minute, I think. Yep. I think. Yeah, there's a dial up mode. So, well, that was weird. Oh. Ooh. No. At least it opens and closes. This is dead quiet. This could be a dud processor. I usually find, in my experience, that if a computer turns on and makes absolutely no noise, which sometimes, sometimes, processor issue. So this is another one. There's two of these that I've now got to go into the uh, take a look at later. So, uh, I've got another one to do which I'll go and grab and I've got another one with no power supply in it so I'll have to uh, go digging in the wardrobe I think for a power supply. I've got a couple there that haven't got one. To, uh, I'll be right back. And here we go again with another one. Last one for the time bin. I've got three left in the pile. So I might as well stick them on this one video. The caddy. Out of there. Oh, some more anodized screws in here. Hopefully one of these will work so I can make one up to keep for myself, although this case is a bit... Yeah. Uh, left the memory stick in the other one, didn't I? Could have all got a box full here. Okay, um. <laughs> Let's 
stick doesn't want to go in. I'm going to stick to stick go in there. Stick from module where we want to Why don't you put it in the right way? Yes. There we go. Just put in that one. Hold on. Maybe I was doing something wrong. Plug in all the necessary cables. Yeah, I wouldn't want to keep one of these smaller dowels as well in my collection. Basically anything I don't want can get resold. Could give you a quick look, uh, you know, it's no different to the others. This one's got a dial-up modem in it as well. I've just noticed this one didn't turn on and straight off like the others did. So, uh, you might be in luck with this one. Let's have a look. Or not. <laughs> well, it's not a dead power supply because the LED is on on the motherboard. Which is a very good hint that we do have power. Could be a dud switch, maybe. Yeah, yeah that's all for the switch. Well, we've got orange and blue. Just so I know where to put the switch. I'll try a separate switch. You never know. Nope, that didn't seem to uh, to uh, have helped. Nah. Well, later on I'll try a power supply because you never know it might have. Uh, may not be feeding the full voltage to the motherboard, so I'll definitely try a power supply that works that I know works okay let's try to think what I've got left I know which one. So three left and two don't have power supplies so what I'm going to go and do is go grab the one that's left with the power supply still in it so uh, be right back well, got this machine now. Yeah, it looks pretty clean inside. None of the switches are connected. So the cover's missing off the CD-ROM drive and floppy drive. I don't matter, I've got loads of them anyway. It's got an Intel processor on it. AGP graphics slot, three PCI slots. I need to see you put the switch back on. Mm, it's got two SATA ports on it. I do you believe that's the switch one? I've eaten chocolate as well. Mum, 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 mum. Right. Power. Keyboard, mouse, monitor, mm -hmm. and post for the VGA screw was uh, unscrewed. There we go, not going there now. 
So I pot luck here because this might be DDR2. No, it isn't DDR400, so that will be DDR. I do like it when a motherboard says it on the board. There we go. We all plugged in. We are. We have life there. We have life here as well. motherboard there no, well, in my experience I would probably say that takes a uh, gigabyte of DDR max I wouldn't have thought that would have taken any more than that actually that looked very familiar to a motherboard I sold recently rock nut up But it isn't, because the rear I.O. is different. Similar. Sorry, it's still munching chocolate. Hmm. Well, that's another one that I've given the does work, pal. Though, because the front panel is missing and whatnot, I'll probably just take the uh, PSU out of this and the motherboard. Um, well, I need a power supply, don't I? So I might as well take it out of this one. So I'm going to turn the camera off and just do that. And then go and get a PC that uh, requires a power supply. So uh, we'll be back in a tick. Well, I'm back with this machine. It's an E machines, and uh, I had to go and grab this power supply because it takes the uh, longer plug. And off the top of my head, I can't remember how many pins it is. Whereas the one I took out the other machine is only a short one. I can't remember. Twenty-four pin or something. Like that. I can't remember. Not off the top of my head. As I've said before on videos, my memory is crap. Take that out of the way. So, uh, I know that that's not going to work on this one, or at least I didn't want to try it. But uh, it'll do for a quick test. So, I'm going to plug this in. going to pop the IDE ribbon cables off out of the way. Oof, that's awfully posh, isn't it? I'm going to pop it off. Right. Pop that off out of the way. It's got a nice SATA cable in there. I like the colour. Nice colour. Matches the slot, um, dim slot. Uh, I need a thingy plug, 12 volt plug. Well, take the power supply. There's no point screwing it in if I just want to test it. So I'm going to test it, put the power supply out like this. I can tell looking at the slots that would be DDR2. Usually, a giveaway is the uh, PCIe video slot. If you're not sure how to tell, my general rule of thumb is if it's got a PCIe slot, then it's most likely going to run DDR2 memory. Right. Uh, not typical. All the power switches are down here. Uh, did I pull the switch off the other computer? I'm sure it did. Yeah, it did. So. Let's see if I can find the header. Several bent pins on the header down here, so I don't see. 
seem to be shorting out. you work? No. No, because I haven't turned that on. There we go. Pump on the switch long enough and I'll start up. There we go. This one, despite being a nice case, I think it's missing its side panel, so its fate will be take everything out of it. That's all I want to know. It's a good way of testing the motherboards to see if they actually work. I suppose I could have gone through and taken the motherboards out of the systems, but as the systems were mostly intact, I figured I might as well just test everything while it's still in the, in the uh, case. No idea why all this is all unplugged and pulled through. So, that's another half decent motherboard. Turn it off. And put the power supply to overheat. And plug everything. Running out of room in here. Pins on the header, I'm not sure if they're going to show up. I can't find my torch. My torch gone. I think I squished my chocolate. Ah, there it is. I'll just quickly show you that. I don't know if you can see in there, but there's a lot of bent header pins on there. earlier where it turned on and didn't do anything, I'll check the processor on it, because I've got several, I mean I could borrow the processor from this one, because I know it works. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Worked and hiccuped at the same time. Have we got anything in the CD drawer? No, because it's not connected, you dumbass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another dumbass moment. So... Yep, I don't think I'll keep this case because it is, uh, looks like it's been kicked around in the mud somewhere. Um, so I've got one computer in the lounge left with no power supply. And I forgot I've got the IBM flat tower as well. I may have a go at doing because it hasn't got a power supply. And uh, later on, I'll 
go and get the two flat towers up that's still in the shed. I've got power supplies in, so that'll be easy enough to test. I might as well, so I know if the motherboards are any good. I don't think any of the other parts are worth salvaging, though. Like the um, power supply units. They might be. I don't know. I don't know if anybody would uh, buy them on eBay. Anyway, I'm going to turn all this off, disconnect it, and... Uh, Go see if I can dig the one out of the lounge. See? Well, I can't dig out the other one quite yet because it's buried under a load of other towers. So, I bought through this IBM. Well, it's a shame that hasn't got the case cover for it. Uh, isn't that motherboard tiny? Look at it. I'm not sure where the... Uh, motherboard would motherboard hard drive would connect to because uh we can only see one IDE channel. Uh and a floppy drive channel. So um yeah I can't even see where that would go. Okay, so that's going to be a bit awkward to get the power supply or for the 12 volt power supply on because it's right under there. Might be able to squeeze my hand in there. Right. I would actually like to fix this one up if I can find a perhaps a uh, busted one on eBay. If this one works. This one works, of course. No good. I don't think I'd get my hand in there. Oh. Huh. Well, that makes life a lot easier. Oh, look at this. Two fans for the processor on there. So, uh, when I turn this on, I better close it. But, uh, I still can't see anywhere where a hard drive would connect. Because I'm pretty certain you can't put a CD-ROM drive and a hard drive on the same IDE channel. Could be wrong. But at the moment, that's about the only obvious answer I've got. It's like, let me see that one. I can't even see a sock in it. Ah! There we go. Found them. Two SATA connectors down there, so which is weird because it's got DDR memory in it. Well, I just put DDR in it, not DDR2. So it must be a quite an early machine. Oh, can't close that yet, can I? Because I've got to put the 12 volt cable in. So I've got to do that first. So and close it and hopefully this one will reach across which it will plug in the VGA cable and put the power cable in the back of the power supply IBM Think Center. System is starting. Well, it's not going to do much more than start. Well, I don't actually have any SATA hard drives. But what I could do is change the ROM drive to an SATA ROM drive and just put an IDE hard drive in it. That should, uh, should work. Uh, the other problem is with this one, I don't have a power supply for it either. But for some reason, I do like this machine, so if I could pick another one up on eBay, 
or from somewhere else online. Oh, it says it being sent, I don't know. <coughs> Does that mean memory size error? Point device area, area, yeah, and I haven't connected any of that. It's then a ground pass, system bug, anyway. I'm just seeing if it tells us what the processor size is. No, it doesn't. It uses the same sort of BIOS as uh, the Dells, the Phoenix first BIOS. If you look at a lot of Dells I've just gone through, they have the same BIOS. No, there's definitely nothing with a processor type on there. Copyright IBM Corporation, 1981 to 2004, all rights reserved. Really? I'm sure SATA was out way after that, though. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, for now, that is the last machine to do. I've got a nice sound card on that. It's not really a nice sound card, it's just a bog standard card. That does look newish. I'm betting this sort of machine was probably used in something like a library. Or again, an office or something like that. That's where you usually find these uh, small machines. Actually, I remember in, when I was uh, working in Argos, the computer we used upstairs in the warehouse was actually all built onto the back of the monitor. So it was very, very, very primitive and non-upgradable. But I suppose for the use that was intended for, it didn't need to be. Because it was only to uh, check stock and... Uh, Look up catalog numbers and things. So uh, it didn't really need to be a super duper powerful thing. Uh, it did its job. That's all that matters. So yeah, I would like to actually fix this one because I like it. I like the look of it for some reason. But ask me why? Because it isn't the best looking machine in the world, does it? Ooh, I wonder if one of the power supplies from one of the flat towers downstairs if it did. Yeah, actually no. So it's going to take a really, really small ATX power supply. I bet that's going to be a pain in the ass to find. I know one of the towers I've got has one, but not quite that small. Oh well, that's something I'll look into. So, that is it for the testing videos. I've gone through all of them now. Apart from the two downstairs, which I'm not going to bother doing. I think I've done enough for the camera. I'll just turn them on when I'd be bothered to bring them upstairs. Uh, I've got to go down later to put the bike in the shed, so I'll probably grab them then. Um, So the next batch of videos I'm going to do will prob probably be looking at the ones that don't work. See if I can uh, get the get them to at least turn on. Well, that's my plan of action anyway. Uh, quite a nice soft touch button. That one. USB ports, microphone, socket and headphone socket on the front. I don't get it. This is what you got built in audio, but they've upgraded to an audio card. How strange. If I do get this working, it'll only run Windows XP. I don't think I'll try.
pardon me, putting anything else on it. It might run Windows 7. I should think the max this could take as well as about a gigabyte DDR RAM. I'll have to uh, double check and research the models online to see what the max RAM capability is. Uh, you know, Google is your best friend in cases like this. You can soon type in your computer's name and model and look for the specs and the specs will usually tell you what you can upgrade the processor and RAM to if the processor is upgradable. Good old ice cold coke. So unplug that. Lift that bit up. I do like that design. How that lifts up like that. IBM's probably got to be well, I was gonna say my one of my favourite brands, but haven't really had any IBM computers. Well, that's just my first IBM desktop, I'll admit that. I've had a couple of IBM laptops, and I've actually got one, which have been pretty good. Um, the camera's on the wall. I've knocked it. There we go. So the <coughs> oh, got a tickle. A tickle in my throat. Sorry about that. This is the first uh, IBM desktop machine I've had. So uh, I don't know how good it is, or how bad it is, or what a uh, speaker cable here, I'm not sure where that goes. It's got a built-in buzzer, but it's also got this speaker. Alright, see a little socket down there. That it could go on. Does it go on that? Well, it fits. <laughs> I can't see anywhere else where that would go. There's a. It can't be for a chassis fan because there's nowhere to put a chassis fan. So it's got to solely rely on them two fans at the front there for cooling. I love it. I don't know what it is, but there's definitely something about this machine that I like. So, that will be going on my keep pile when I get to it. A couple of lock mechanisms there for something, I don't know. Does it lock in the floppy drive or something? Ah, yeah, there we go. Locks and unlocks the floppy drive. This is sorry, I was doing that while that camera was pointing elsewhere. Yeah, they lock that locks the floppy drive in. That unlocks it. Yeah. Pull it out, then you can't get it back in. There we go. Before I break it, I'll lock it back into place. So, that's going to be one I'll do up later. Um, sounds like it's raining outside. Glad I'm not outside today. So, I can get on with the next lot of videos, I suppose. If I'm feeling up to it, I might actually have a break in front of the com my own computer. So, uh, if you like my computer, testing videos then uh, hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button any comments and questions insults compliments etc in the comments section below uh, thanks for watching and until next time i'll talk to you later bye